The United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund representative in Ghana has reiterated the need for global efforts to ensure the rights of children are protected and respected to foster the sound growth and development. Susan Ngongi was speaking to Joy News on the 25th anniversary of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Ghana is the first country to officially endorse the institutionalization of UNICEF by ratifying the Charter. But after 25 years, the country representative of the UN body laments there's no equity in the distribution and enjoyment of rights by Ghanaian children. She's therefore calling on governments globally to ensure even-handedness and proactiveness to ensure that children are not discriminated against irrespective of their status. Equity is a key part of the rights of the child. When we talk about access to education, we talk about access to services such as health services, we talk about um, the reduc poverty reduction efforts, etc. All of those are rights. So the point I'm trying to make is not all children benefit from their rights in an equal manner. Not all children have this same access to benefit from, no, from those rights. Not all Ghanaian children go to school. Not all Ghanaian children have access to sanitation. Not all Ghanaian children are born in their facility. Um, not all Ghanaian children um, um, have access to nutritious foods, for instance. Not all Ghanaian children are protected in an equal fashion. What we're saying is equity. So while progress has been made, that's fantastic. We must reach all children. The country representative of UNICEF, however, did add that since the inception of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, massive successes have been choked, including fewer maternal deaths, more children gaining access to education, and improvement in health care. Deputy Minister of Gender, Children and Social Protection, John Alexander Akon, says government is highly concerned about the rights of the Ghanaian child, hence the expansion of the landmark livelihood empowerment against poverty intervention. What the ministry is doing, which is far advanced now, that we are doing what is called the Child and Family Welfare Policy. It's a localized version of the policy. And what it seems to do is that we still want to allude to the fact that we have an extended family system in the Ghanaian context. And therefore, the family responsibility should be captured as part of the policy which will come. And therefore, that social network, insurance network in our system should be grabbed as part of the culture so that we have ownership from the entire extended family system. That will come about. So it is called the Child and Family Welfare Policy. And by the end of the year, I'm sure we're going to get it coming to roll out next year. Then we'll see what you are doing. So there's hope in the way the child is going to we are handling the child in principle. From that, we follow up with the child justice system. The platform was also used to celebrate young Ghanaian innovators who spoke extensively on the need to respect children's rights. The program, which was dubbed Building Virtual Bridges, Innovative Solution for Reaching the Unreached, marks the last in a series to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, UNICEF. Latif Idris's report for Joy News. Deputy Minister of Energy and Petroleum John Jinepo has disclosed that inadequate funding is hindering government's efforts to connect more communities to the national grid. This, he says, has prompted the Energy and Petroleum Ministry to initiate approval processes for a loan to enable them to connect additional communities to the national grid. But do you think we should continue extending electricity to rural areas when production is barely able to meet demand with frequent power cuts. Kobna Chenchahini Boateng spoke with the cross-section of Ghanaians here in Accra. Sending uh, power to uh, the rural areas for now, I think even uh, in this, uh, in Accra here, so if we are having power uh, outages. So I, mean, I think uh, the government should pay more attention or find Resolute solution to the uh, uh, power uh, outages now because some uh, most of the, most of the times the businesses, even if you have generator, you can't operate. So I think the government should pay more attention and make sure that there is uh, uh, enough power uh, in Accra here, so that and then if he, if he's able to solve that problem, then he can extend. And uh, the power programs with other areas. So while government is at it, uh, are you suggesting that all those who are not connected to the grid remain in darkness? Uh, that is not the case, but I think most of the business are also sent in a cry. The people also there also need power. So I think the government 
should pay attention to the power problem here and also uh, extend uh, some of the power to uh, the other areas also. So we have been using it now, don't have the access. So what is the guarantee that what they say they are going to do is possible? It, it won't work. What we can do now is to, we should make sure at least the, uh, the service providers, they have to get to the field and make sure those who are owing the government that is creating the problem, those money should be retracted. And upon that, when the government says it's going to do something, we'll all support it. But for now, we don't think what they say they are going to do will be successful. So, so that means for now, uh, all those who, do not, who are not connected to the grid should still remain in darkness? Is that what you're suggesting? They shouldn't stay in darkness. But what we are doing is, what will save the situation is, the service providers, they are the people to get to the uh, grassroots and make sure those who own them, they receive the money. And upon that, when the government says it's going to do this, this will be very effective. Because now, let's say, let's use this house for example. They may have electricity, which is collected illegal. The government is losing from that end there. And it's not only one person, about a chain of houses connected and they are using it illegally. So where is the money going to come from for the government to use it for this project? It, the, the whole thing is, it's only for the service provider to get down to the root and receive the money. And when they give it to the money, the government, the government will just use it to do it. And that would be the purpose. I think it's a good idea for government to extend um, electricity to you like the rural areas or those who don't have but the problem is that um, we should solve the energy problem first before extending it to the deprived areas in and that will still be in the same or a worse problem that's all so that means you, are, you do agree that the other people do need electricity but now is not the opportune time is that what you're saying yeah i think um we should do first things first we should solve the problem at hand and then we would extend the electricity to those that need it. Yeah. Solving the problem may take uh, some time, you know. Obviously, some long-term measures need to be put in place. So if for, say, five years, ten years, the, the problem still persists, we are still trying to solve the problem. During that period, what happens? They are still in darkness? Um, well, I think um, we can also factor in um, we have solar energy or something like that. At least we should try and see how best we can help them while solving the problem at hand. And then I think we'll be cool, yeah. Well, I think that uh, the government is trying to make an effort to extend electricity to those who do not have. Even though we are suffering here in Accra, some people do not have at all. So I believe that if the uh, government is able to balance it for the whole country to have electricity, then I think it's, it's, it's a nice move. So how is go government going to balance? Isn't that going to put too much pressure on the already terrible situation we have now? Well, it is going to be so, but some people are not having electricity at all. Okay, some are not having electricity at all, so it will be best for all of us to benefit than just uh, a section to benefit whilst others do not benefit. So I think that, well, government is making an effort. But I also think that they should also make, uh, try and increase uh, the capacity so that even though they are extending to other regions, we, those in the, the capital city and other cities, might also benefit because this is where industrialization takes place. This is where uh, the bulk of the city is. So let's, let's make an effort to also uh, provide electricity for those here and I think uh, everything will be okay. Stories and the executive director of the African Entrepreneurship Academy Wilson, Wilson Senior has blamed the country's inability to maximize its profits or its export opportunities to the high levels of ignorance on the part of many Ghanaian entrepreneurs. He said Many of these entrepreneurs in the country are ignorant of the processes involved in getting their products across to the international markets as such are unable to make the necessary revenue. I would say it's ignorance. You see? So a lot of them call me and say, oh, I want to export, but I hear there's a challenge. I hear it's difficult. And I said, how much have you inquired? How much have you sought to know about exports? So that is why we are doing this, to bring information, to bring knowledge to the Ghanaian entrepreneur, for them to know how to begin an export business, the steps to take. So from my point of view, from the academy's point of view, I think the being of a lot of us uh, entrepreneurs is ignorance 
of procedures, of standards, of the market opportunities out there for the Ghanaian entrepreneur. See, some are also suggesting that, you know, even in Ghana, we are not even patronizing our own products. Mm -hmm. uh, why then do you think those outside will be encouraged enough to patronize your products? Mm -hmm. You'll be amazed. There's a saying that the prophet is usually not uh, welcome in his own hometown. So it's, it's normal. But you'll be amazed the way people accept Ghanaian products out there. What we are doing is that we are not just telling people exports. That's why we are bringing the experts here to talk to us about the standards, the world-class standards that your products have to meet. Okay? Now, we don't only engage with the foreign machines. We, don't, we are not only talking about exports. We also talk about Ghanaian patronizing our products.